All right. Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the Elevate Experience podcast. I am your host, uh, Seth Provencio. And with me in the studio via Zoom today, we have our good buddy, Nate Miller. Uh, Nate Miller is actually the supervisor of uh, family support and health services at Elevate Santa Cruz's sister location, South Lake Tahoe. So there's an Elevate in Santa Cruz and there's also an Elevate in South Lake Tahoe. Uh, the difference between the two being that uh, clients who do their full program or on average about 60 day program uh, usually do their program in Elevate Addiction Services Santa Cruz. However, we do offer a shorter program uh, you know, with something that you could kind of arrange um, with our admission staff if you wanted to come to Elevate, that takes 30 days and that happens in um, uh, South Lake Tahoe. So right. uh, good morning, Mr. Nate. Good morning. Good morning, Seth. Good morning, everyone. Right on. So Nate. Nice to see you. Yeah, glad to see you too. You know, mm. tell us a little bit about, um, you know, what you do at Elevate. For sure. Um, so up here in South Lake Tahoe, um, sometimes I refer to it as Narnia. We've got a fresh Narnia. coat of snow. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, you know, we're a little bit removed from um, home base, but, um, you know, we're still connected in every which way, um, you know, to our Santa Cruz uh, location. So um, my role mirrors what is um, going on going on down in Watsonville where there is a family advisor. Um, so the family advisor is a pretty crucial role, um, albeit background role um, to the clients uh, where I'm in contact with the family, kind of letting them know, um, you know, what's going on. I'm their eyes and ears for the progress that's being made here, explaining what the program is about, more of an education role of you know what addiction is and how it can be overcome. Um, additional to that, I am the supervisor of the health services. So uh, along the operation side of um, you know the the facility, I'm kind of uh, making sure that we're following procedures, um, making sure that the environment's very healthy and supportive for those to to work on their recovery. So. Yeah, in a nutshell, that's what that looks like. Very cool. Very cool. <clears throat> you know, um, sometimes when, you know, right now I'm I'm a full time uh, group counselor. Uh, I'm kind of subbing in for uh, for group counseling. Um, and when clients will call back home to their families, sometimes, you know, they have these these rather rough phone calls. And I have to explain to clients to say, look, you're recovering from this. And also your family is recovering as well. Right. I think, I think it's like, um, I think mm -hmm. as, as addicts or as ex addicts, um, I, I could see like when I was in, when I was running my own personal program in, in, you know, 2019 that I said, Hey, I, I remember telling my parents, like, this is my life. You know, I do what I want. It has nothing yeah. to do with you. If I want to do drugs or drink. You know, but in, in reality, um, the loved ones of someone suffering from addiction also carry a cross or a burden in going through that experience with this individual, correct? Right. Yes. And I think it's important for um, us to recognize in both the client and the family aspects that the client is in treatment right now. Their family is not. So we are seeing the clients in a way that their families may have never seen them before in a light that is so positive and there's progress being made. And yet the family is, you know, back home trying to pick up the pieces and, and do what they can the best that they can. So, you know, I think my role also encompasses, um, uh, you know, kind of guiding and, and really helping the families come to an understanding of, um, you know, there, there is a degree of separation between, you know, what's going on with the client at, here and what's going on at home, but you both are in a, a kind of similar situation of learning and, and recovering together. That's awesome. You know, and 
so you're the guy who's there for the family while their loved one is in treatment. Right. Yes, yes, exactly. Because oftentimes it's um, folks who have never been to therapy before. You know, it's someone who has dealt with um, something, that, a difficult situation the best that they could and, you know, gave all they could and it still wasn't enough. So they still need to, to come to um, peace and, and acceptance of the situation. And I'm kind of there to, to give them that hope because it is a very hopeful process, no matter what. Clients will have uh, difficult conversations and there are going to be reminiscent memories that are brought up during those phone conversations that you were talking about that are difficult. And so, you know, it's going to, you know, the family will call me after that phone call and say, oh my gosh, it sounds like they're not doing well. And, you know, my goodness, like, is everything okay? And it's like, yes, you know, this is a developmental <laughs> process. Things are going to be fine um, because they're learning so much and absorbing so much. It's sometimes a wrong place, wrong time. Very cool. You know, it's like, do, do you ever have, I bet you have some awesome stories of, of different families that you've maybe worked with. Right. Yes. Um, <laughs> it, it's a weekly type of thing. You know, we, it depends on what area of the program that a client is in, um, whether it be that they had just gotten out of detox and was sent up on a van and brought here um, to, to kind of be immersed full fledged into the program before, uh, having the chance to experience that in down in Watsonville, or it's the, the situations where some, uh, a client leaves detox in Watsonville, spends a couple days down there, gets used to it, comes up to Tahoe and they're like, you know, they're missing their friends that they made down there and, and the environment. So oftentimes I do my best to kind of prepare families for those inevitable uh, difficult conversations that are had, whether or not that um, those suggestions are followed or what have you, it kind of depends on, on, on the situation. So um, for instance, a client who has come uh, from, you know, treatment center to treatment center is used to a certain way of things comes to elevate and it's completely different um right so they're telling their family on the phone like you know uh, we're we're forcing crossfit on or they're forcing <laughs> crossfit on me and um you know this mindfulness thing you know so families will call me and they're like what is this you know I, i'm so <laughs> confused like can you explain to me like what you guys are doing there because it sounds really different and you know it's not something that they're used to so um a lot of times the clients are really good at, you know, um, the, the ones who are in that early cycle of change or stage of change, they're really good at twisting things a little bit. So, you know, they might have stories that come up that they're like, I'm, I'm in a new religion or what have you. Oh. And it's kind of like, <laughs> you know, the families are just like, oh, wow, like, what is going on? So it's a lot of like, kind of um, making sure the truth is known, I guess. <laughs> yes, I, I could totally imagine clients saying, you know, like early, early uh, introductory to the program saying, they're making you wear tinfoil hats and lift I mean, barbells and what's yeah. going on here. <laughs> right, right. Because it is different and it's, it's special. So, you know, I, I think it's kind of, there's a shock value to it in a way because they're used to being treated as this, you know, like you know, specimen or number or what have you um, to, to now they're like a person and that's not common. I, I love how you said that it's different, but not only different, it is special. Right. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. I, th I think about my own personal experience with rehabilitation, right. And with the, the numerous programs that I've been to um, trying to get sober myself. And, and when I got here, I said, wow, this place is a lot different, you know, mm -hmm. and it is special, you know, yeah. uh, <clears throat> and it's, it's cool to see some, you know, people like yourself and myself who, who are program alumni, right. Who, who want to give back, you know, to make that special experience uh, for these clients as well, you know? Yes. Yeah. So important. Um, initially, like when I was a client, when you were a client, I think that 
we can kind of reestablish what these, uh, what our clients are experiencing. Um, you know, I, I remember uh, coming down from detox and being down the hill for the first time, exposed to a whole group of people for the first time and how like energizing it was, even though it was very nerve wracking. And then the counselors that made an impact to me, I went on a walk that you hosted, that you would take the folks who were on either mass protocol or could not participate in fitness and the, um, you know, uh, kind of fellowship that I experienced on that is something that I want to kind of touch back and give to others. Um, so that's kind of where I'm coming from when I think of, okay, if I'm losing touch with, um, you know, the tasks that pile up during the week and like, you know, the things that are coming at me from all different directions, why did I do this? And it's because of uh, a special and uh, impactful experience like that, like day one out of detox, day two, you know, it's, it's all new <laughs> yeah. and exciting. I love that, you know, especially when it comes to, I could see that being extremely important, especially when it comes to dealing with families, you know, it's like, it's, it's mm -hmm. like a lot of times the family members of people struggling with addiction can cop, you know, well, I want to say cop, but can pick up these resentments, you know, or these right. judgments of their loved one. Is it a moral failing? Is it a, a character defect? Is it a, is it a thing of, of grit or strength that, you know, that they struggle with, you know, and it's like, um, I can imagine talking to, you know, talking to the family members and saying, Hey, look, like it's, it's not that they're a bad person or a sick person, you know, it's just, right they need to kind of expand their awareness to who they are, where they're at and where they're trying to go. Yeah. Me personally, like I remember talking to um, my parents and, and um, when, when I was like in very early recovery and they would, they would say some things that to me really didn't make sense. Like, um, well, you just have to go back to how things were before, or, you know, you, you need to backtrack and get back to who you used to be, you know, 10 years ago. And I said, Hey, look, mm -hmm. like as much as I'd love to, I can never undo my experience or, and I tried to explain this to them and, and we'd butt heads, yeah. you know, right. And ultimately yeah. it's like, okay, I, I felt the support of, of the elevate staff in not needing to correct, you know, or fight with them in, in trying to explain you know, my own personal experience, you know? Right. Um, yeah. I, I think it's easy for um, other methods to say like, oh, we're going to meet you where you are. Um, and, and that is certainly effective in, in, you know, their objectives and their goals. However, you know, I think at Elevate, truly meeting someone where they are, as soon as they, you know, get off that plane and get picked up by, by someone who's been, in that same seat that you're sitting in now. Um, starting from that moment forward, you've got all sorts of people that, that work here that understand the kind of guilt and the shame that are associated. We're really good at causing those feelings within ourselves as it is. We don't need anybody else to do that for us. Um, so yeah, it reinforcing with the family that again, you're not seeing the person that they are today because they're not with you. We are with them. Um, and, 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 and when you see them that next time, when, when they get out of here, you will understand what this was all for, you know? Yes, I, I do. It's like, um, it, it makes, it makes us feel special, like as the treatment team to be like, to see the growth occur in the individuals that we, that we help. And, mm -hmm. you know, they're, the families are back home. They don't know, they can't really see, Oh man, like this person's now lifting weights. This person's now doing yoga. This person now sleeps and eats on a regular cycle, right? This person's um, right. making nutrition a priority. And, you know, now they're showering more, they're shaving more, their hygiene's better. They walk with better posture. They speak more clearly and when they, right. when they, when the loved ones pick them up in the parking lot, right at the end yeah. of this journey, 
it's like yeah they say man who are you um, you lost 20 wow. pounds since you've been here yes you know? yes yeah it, it's a very um inspiring thing to see we see it on a daily basis and we see it gradually so that's the other thing too is you know for them it's a big jump from a to b you know or, or a to z i mean and here we are with you know uh, C D E F G. you know all of those steps that we're right. seeing that create that final product or that outcome um that everyone was hoping for then you know, sometimes we can kind of, I think, get lost in the, the, the muddle of that until their family picks them up and they're like, oh my gosh, like it is true. You know, and we're like, yes, it is, <laughs> you know? <laughs> right, exactly. It's it's a very gradual process for us. It's one day at a time for us here. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. I, I would say so. You know, with it being so uh, varied with the way folks take their programs like some people are slower than others in making those changes um sometimes like the first three weeks you're not seeing much um they're here and that's a, a step in the right direction as it is but then after that third week it's like bam they they all of a sudden something clicks within them or you've got those folks that come in ready to roll ready to do this so you know it, it's really dependent upon the client um, and you can't compare one to another at all. Um, and, and that's the other thing is like telling or, or um, it, it tell, talking with families about uh, the, the general process. I can say this is what usually happens, but the progress is as unique as their loved one is unique. So, you know, of all of the different things that make up who they are, there are even more things that make up their treatment. I love that. You know, each and every individual is addressed in a unique kind of way. Oh. And we don't we don't push or or rush growth in an individual. We kind of create a space where they're able to kind of experience that for themselves, right? Right. You know, and and when they do and they and they make that decision within themselves, it's like man, nothing can stop them from there. You talked about the click, you know, yeah. some, some clients will yeah. click in week one, some clients, I mean, with me in, in Santa Cruz, uh, some clients will click at, you know, week five or week six, you know? Um, right. I mean, when you talk about that, that click or when, when things just make sense, you're like, oh my gosh, like, you know, I, I might, you know, me being a client from the perspective of a client, saying oh my gosh like maybe i can do this maybe i i don't right. have to i can find a way to live without drugs and alcohol and still have a satisfying experience i mean i to me this click is like in my mind i remember this in in detail did did it when did it click for you um you know i i think there's um degrees of clicks maybe right oh i so love that <laughs> If we can parse it down to uh, those types of instances, I would say like the initial one would be back home, um, you know, when I've had my second intervention and the um, realization that this isn't going to stop, um, you know, this uh, attention on me and um, the reminders that things aren't going well, those don't stop. Um, until you do something about it. So regardless of whatever I thought the outcome would be, whether it be sobriety or like I just needed a mental health break or something, you know, I made a choice in that moment to come to treatment. Um, so then, you know, maybe uh, getting through detox, uh, you know, another click is um, make, or understanding the seriousness of substance abuse and, and um, the physical effects of addiction and saying like, wow, like I'm, I'm, I think I'm feeling much better. Like, you know, my stomach's feeling better. I'm feeling more clear headed towards the end of it. So I'm like, wow, okay. So that's like a click there. And then 
the further you go, the more like things just start adding up and making sense. So um, breakthrough clicks, I would say use that term <laughs> over and over again, like, you know, when you're reaching a certain point in the program and you've emotionally made um, such significant progress, you're like, oh my gosh, this all makes sense. Um, so I would say it started at home and it, it just progressed. Like, you know, you have to have um, like uh, su sufficient or like uh, things that follow in a particular order to make things happen. So <laughs> I, I love yeah. that. I love the degrees of clicking, you know, because even right. if I think about it now, because like, you know, first and foremost, as Elevate staff, you know, in the helping profession, we, you know, we are in recovery and, and we work on ourselves, you know, right. and I mean, I'm still right. clicking, you know, it's like, yeah. uh, <laughs> I'm still, there's still clicks that I'm experiencing, you know? Yeah. And, and it's cool. It's cool to be there with the client when they click. And I, I bet you also can see like when, when, when you deal with the family, maybe they need to have that click too, where, you know, the more contact they have with you and saying, you know, how do I, how do I navigate my own life? Cause they're in recovery from addiction as well, indirectly. Maybe they right. say, okay, how do I live in a way now where I'm able to support my loved one or, or, or what, what is it, what do I need to do to support my loved one as they go through this? Right. Yeah. And, and it's usually a simple answer, right? It's, it's right. It it's always less is complicated than what someone might <laughs> assume at first, you know, it, it's the little things that add up to make the bigger picture. So is it the, you know, um, you know I, I need to make sure that, you know, I answer that phone call when it comes from this person. Um, is it the, um, you know, the next time I uh, am with them, I, I show them a little bit more support or motivation or encouragement than I did the last time. Um, or is it even like, do I need to go to therapy myself? Um, yes. I will never tell anybody that they need to, but I would say that it benefits everybody. And if you're desiring a, a deeper understanding of yourself and your family and, and what makes your life the way it is, then go. You know, that's, that's like you know, the, the, the best thing possible. But if you do the little things, things will usually play out in a better way than before. <laughs> I love that. You know, it's like, even with the 12 step program modality, right. You have, um, say, say for a program like Alcoholics Anonymous, right. Uh, for the loved ones of people with that, they have this thing called Al-Anon, right. Yes. Which is, which is for family members of people, um, in, in recovery or going to, you know, an Alcoholics Anonymous program, or I've seen like, uh, uh, CODA, which is like codependency anonymous, right? Um, I've met right. somebody who's who's gone to that where they say, oh, like this helps me have firm boundaries with my own mental health in regards to the people that I care for or the people that depend on me. Um, yeah. You know, I, I, I say everyone out there, you know, addiction, no addiction, uh, work, whatever, whatever demographic you're from could benefit from counseling and, you know, mental health services that at some capacity. Yeah. Right. Right. And then, you know, just in those, uh, through those tools, um, that you're using, whether it be meetings, even free meetings that you can go to, or, you know, going to therapy, what have you, then you'll be more, um, able to utilize tools. And the thing is, is if nothing changes, nothing changes. So that's, a very important thing for, you know, if the environment foster, if the family environment fosters, you know, continued addiction before treatment and nothing in between the time of admittance and discharge changes at home, then that person's going to kind of get back into that same environment that uh, uh, supported addiction. So, you know, I, I think that's also um uh, bringing awareness is something that the family uh, as the advisor does um, to, you know, what helps addiction thrive and what kills it. I love that. I, I love that so much. You know, awareness, I think is, is one of the biggest, 
biggest cornerstones of conquering addiction, right, is expanding your awareness, you know, on everything, if you can, or living with a perspective on life where your goal is to expand your awareness. Um, right. And it's, it, it sounds, it sounds very comprehensive, right? Because, you know, I mean, for me, where I'm from, I'm from the Central Valley, California, right? It's, a, it's a very cowboy, you know, kind of town. And, and I remember yeah. dealing with, with family or friends and, and, or, or, past partners and they say why don't you just stop you know or my boss one time you know i remember telling me seth i just wish you'd stop getting high you know or um mm. you know you should just quit you know why don't you just stop mm. drinking or this or that right <laughs> and i say right. look i'm trying to stop you know or maybe i'd i'd go because i've been me personally like i've been to residential uh i finished like four programs you know residential style programs and uh, I'd always kind of return to the same way of living after this program. You know, I go to a program and I'd be like, yeah, you know, I'm lifting, I'm reading, I'm sleeping well, I'm doing all these mm-hmm. things. I'm, you know, mm-hmm. uh, taking care of my mental health. I have counseling or, or what have mm-hmm. you. And then I'd go back to my life and I'm like, okay, well now, I'm, you know, I'm choking chickens at foster farms and Livingston or doing, you know, this or that. And I'm just like, Right. The there was a lot that needed to change uh for me personally. And and there's big changes, like you said. The more you change, the more you change. Right. And what makes up a big change? That is what's crucial. You know, so the expectation within families uh often is like, you know, once treatment is done, everything's fine. There's you know, no up, you know, we're not gonna have any difficulties anymore. And it's like, okay the difficulties are going to be few and far between and shallow in depth as they were in the past, but they're still there. As long as the client goes through little, uh, you know, uh, maintenances of habits, the small habits, they make up that bigger picture to where, you know, things are going to be fine until something external happens that may throw them off but at least they'll be better suited to handle it um so the little things add up to the big that's my my saying a lot of times is when they're like what how do I know they're doing well I'm like okay well are they making the bed in the morning are they um exercising regularly are they going to that one meeting that they said they would you know all of those things can be gauges to figure out okay how are things I love I'm that. All about gauges. <laughs> uh, 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 all about gauges. I love that. You know, a dollar is, is just a hundred pennies, right? Right. You know, so yes, making absolutely. your bed, hygiene, right? A uh, uh, hundred dollars is just a hundred one dollar bills, you know, and, yeah. and a big person is just a bunch of big decisions, right? Yes. And sobriety and recovery is a whole lot of little things that make up someone's life. Um, and sure, maybe if they didn't make their bed that morning, but they did go to that meeting, you know, like there are things that can, you know, maybe be forgotten or, you know, their, their mistakes are made. Right. Um, so, but when you look at the, the bigger picture, were you counting on that bed to be made as your whole, no, you were thinking of other things as well. So all is not lost if <laughs> something goes wrong. Because something went right today, you made your bed or you brushed your, you know, that's, yeah. I love that. <laughs> all, all is not lost on an unmade bed in the morning. <laughs> yes, absolutely. I love that. Doesn't yeah. mean that the world's crashing, you know, we're not catastrophizing. Right. Or say, how about this? If you get into a fender bender and you're like, oh my gosh, like life sucks today. I was late to work. I had a fender bender, blah, blah, blah did I make my bed this morning? Then things <laughs> go to that. Like, at least I did these things. So again, all is not lost. You know, I'm yeah. fine. I love I'm that. Well. I love that. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, mm-hmm. um, or, or even with, even with the clients, it's like, I can see the loved ones at home being like, yo, he, you know, Jimmy didn't call me today, you know, but he did call you a couple days ago and he's doing well, you know? Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, exactly. I mean, he called you. That's what I would look at is right. did he, I mean, how did that conversation go? Let's talk about, you know, the, the quality of what was being talked about. 
um, the um, the fact that he you ended on a positive note, even right? You know that that's what I kind of uh, ask them to or invite them the families to explore is what is uh, going right in a, a particular instance. Um, sure, he hasn't called like you know maybe he had a couple rough couple days and it was emotional, but the last time he talked to you was he was he ha- you know fine like were things sounding okay then yeah then things are going well and that's what i'm here for too is to to take those calls um if a family is concerned and they're worried they haven't heard from their loved one you know i i can you know be that those eyes and ears to say you know what he is here or she is here and um she's doing fine um you know she's participating we're seeing this xyz you know all of that um so so don't worry do you want me to take a message to just let them know that you're thinking of them you know that goes a long way sometimes you know all of these things it, it's it's um very composite with different things us being involved the client the family um society in general you know everything yes. makes this up <laughs> I, I i love that you know i love seeing those messages come on my like workspace messenger it's like uh please tell client so-and-so to call his, you know, his mom or his dad, you know, or or somebody says, Hey, happy birthday. Please tell client so-and-so that aunt called and wished happy birthday. You know, they love stuff like that. You know, yeah, it it makes a world of difference in, in their own personal fight uh, for their own recovery. So, you know, as, as our podcast starts to make its way to its end, um, I'd like to ask you, do you have any advice for families as, as you being like the supervisor of, of the family, you know, liaising um, for the facility South Lake Tahoe, you know, elevate, right. Do you have any advice for maybe somebody who has a loved one struggling with addiction, who hasn't gone to treatment yet? And is just kind of like, like wondering, how do I help? How do I help my loved one? You know? during this time right um you know i would say persistence mixed with patience okay so you know that is a a key balance because no matter how hard you push there's it the if your loved one is not ready it won't make a difference but the patience of continuing with that persistence and, and not losing hope will make an impact. It, it's just little chips. You're, you're, you're facing this mountain ahead of you because addiction is huge. It is um, profound in someone's life. They are attached to it. And uh, breaking down those bonds takes time. Of course, in immediate threats of, of life and uh, limb, danger to self and others, immediate action from proper uh, professionals and authorities is absolutely warranted, um, you know, to save a life. But when it comes down to uh, uh, like changing that willingness and the motivation to actually change and um, not only establish the change, but maintain it, it takes time. Um, and, and you just got to keep on trying. Don't give up. Um you know, I, I, I hear a lot that even with folks who go to treatments, 13 treatments sometimes they've gone through, um, their families are just wondering what the use is at this point. What is going to happen? They are a different person than they were yesterday, an hour ago, a minute ago. So you never know when that word of encouragement or pleading or, you know, a reminder of how things are is going to hit them. I love that. It's like, it's like mining for gold, like trying to find that click, you know? Yeah. You're not, you're not going to find it if you, you know, you yeah. can't win if you don't play, you know, that's Absolutely. the, <laughs> that's the lottery, yes. right? So it, it is to be strong in your, in your kindness and compassion, right? It takes a lot of strength to show somebody kindness, especially if they're struggling. And if that's str- if their struggle affects you in a negative way, as well as, as a loved one or a parent, Wow. Right. Well, yeah. And, 
and what you're saying about sorry to cut you off but Please as do. far as what uh, the lottery essentially what you're winning when you do achieve that with your loved one is what are you willing to bet on are you willing to bet on them uh you know kind of finding it on their own and and risking very bad things happening to them or are you going to do everything you can to make it happen in your ability you know looking back on it did you do everything you can think about your future self that's what i have to say (laughs) i love that i love that i love that i love that well nate it's been a pleasure uh to have you on this podcast and i'm looking forward to doing a part two with you you know there's we've had so much good conversation that i'm just like man i i i want to see where this goes so hopefully um hopefully you'll be available for that and i'll reach out to you in the future um for sure and for all of those who are listening, um, I want to thank you guys for listening uh, to our Elevate Experience podcast. Uh, if you or somebody you know or love is struggling with addiction to drugs or alcohol, and you, and maybe, maybe it's your first time in the treatment modality uh, in in trying to find a good treatment center, or maybe you're looking for something new, different, or special. Uh, please look us up online, Elevate Addiction Services. Uh, we do offer a sixty day um, program in, in Santa Cruz, California. And we do also offer a 30 day program in, uh, South Lake Tahoe, where you'll have people like the very charming and insightful Nate Miller. That's right. You know, who <laughs> will really be in contact with you or your loved one yeah. you know, during these times. And, yeah. um, yeah, I want to thank everybody for listening and, you know, keep up the good fight. Um, you know, always, always, choose kindness, you know, be strong yeah. in, in taking mm-hmm. care of yourself or your loved ones, you know, and mm-hmm. I, I want to thank everybody for listening. Yes. Thank you everybody. And thank you, Seth. I appreciate your time and, and uh, your invitation for being here. It's been a pleasure. And on that note, I'll see you guys next week.